Hey guys, the objective of this video is to understand an undrained example using the effective stress analysis. We're going to do that by finding the change in the pore water pressure, which is equal to the change in the mean stress. We can then go ahead and find the change in the effective stress in the x, y, and z direction, and then we can find the strains in the x, y, and z direction. So as you can see, it's the exact same example we did before. We had all of these stresses equaling 100 kPa, and then they're increased and decreased at different, in, def, in different directions. So the first thing we need to do is, because we're doing an effective stress analysis, we're going to have to find the effective, stre effective stress changes. But to first do that, we're going to have to find the change in the pore water pressure. Now, because when we have an undrained case, so we're doing, once again, we've done total stress, we're doing effective stress now, and we're going to get the same answer. When we're doing an undrained case, we mentioned that all the stress is felt by the pore water pressure. We get excess pore water pressure because all the applied stress is felt by the water. So we can say that the mean stress, the mean vol volume stress is equal to the change in the pore water pressure, which is just simply change in, which is just simply a third of change in total stress X plus change in total stress Y plus change in total, 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 total stress Z. Now we know from before that change in total stress x is 100, it went from 100 to 80, so it's minus 20. Change in y went from 100 to 110, so it's plus 10. And change in z went from 100 to 120, so it changed by 20, which means we can find our change in pore water pressure, which would be one third outside of minus 20 plus 10 plus 20 which would just equal 10 on 3. So that would be our change in pore water pressure. Now we can find our change in effective stress because we know that effective stress equals total stress minus pore water pressure. And I've just put change in outside the front of all these values. So this one would equal the change in x we found to be minus 20. So this would be minus 20. And the change in pore water pressure is minus 10 on 3. So this would give us a value of minus 70 on 3. We could find change in the y direction. So this would be change in y, which is 10. So 10 minus 10 on 3. And this would equal 20 on 3. Change in effective stress in the z direction would be 20 minus 10 on 3, which equals 50 on 3. So we have all our values now for the effective change in stresses, which is different to the total change in stresses, it's effective. Now we can simply find our strains. So for an effective stress analysis, the strain in the x direction is given by the formula change in effective stress minus v dash over change, sorry, outside of change in y of effective stress plus change in z of effective stress, and this is all divided by E dash. So we'll notice the difference between a effective analysis and a total analysis. We're now using V dash and E dash as opposed to VU and EU, which was for undrained. This sample is undrained, but we're doing, it, we're doing an effective stress analysis. Now let's say for our example that V dash was 0 0.2 and E dash was 5 MPA or 5,000. Let me just double check those values. Yep, V dash was 0.2 and E dash was 5,000 kPa or 5 MPa. So then we can calculate these values. So we have the change in the change in stress, in effective stress in the x direction, is minus 70 on 3. So minus 70 on 3 minus V dash from our question is 0.2. So minus 0.2 outside of change of y effective, so that would be 20 on 3, plus change in z effective, which is 50 on 3. Now this is all above e dash, which is 5,000. So put this all over 5,000, we would get an answer of minus 0 0.0056 which was the exact same answer we got for the previous video for a total stress analysis. In the previous video, we found that the strain in the x direction was minus 0 0.0056 
and we've just found that using an effective stress analysis, we get the exact same answer. If we were to do EY, so the change in stress in the Y direction, we'd get the change, so we'd change, this would now be the change in stress of Y, effective. So that would be that value there, so 20 on 3, minus 0 0.2, outside of change in X plus change in Z, which would be minus 70 on 3, plus 50 on 3. So that's minus 70 on 3, plus 50 on 3. And this is all divided by 5,000, and we'd see that we get an answer of 0 0.0016, which is the exact same answer we got for the total stress analysis. And then we could finally find the strain in the Z direction, which would be the change in effective stress in the Z direction, which is 50 on 3, minus 0 0.2 outside of the stress in the X and the Y, so minus 70 on 3, plus 20 on 3, and this would also all be divided by 5,000, and we get an answer of 0 0.004, which is the same answer we got for the total stress analysis. So, as you can see, the effective stress analysis yields the exact same answers as the, as the total stress analysis, so this is the, we're looking at the effective. The effective stress analysis for this video yields the exact same answers as the total stress analysis. The main difference though is just the process. And a big, big difference is that we're using the parameters V dash and E dash, which are the effective stress, not VU and EU, which is for undrained. Okay, so once again, both these, both these analysis, both these methods, the total stress and the effective stress, will give you the exact same answer. Just recognize the different way of doing it. Um, in the next video, we're going to be looking at the formulas for a drained case. We've only been undrained so far, but in the next video, we're going to be doing undrained. Hope that helps, guys.